Out of all the 600 player spells in Baldur's Gate 3, only one gives me the same satisfaction as sticking random people in my neighborhood with my insulin pen. Eldritch Blast. A spell that makes even a better sound than Boba Fett's seismic charges. All those available spells, why should I use them if the game gives me the best spell level 1? And even better, it's a cantrip. Meaning I can spam it without having to long rest. And most importantly of all, I don't have to use more than 20% of my brain to beat the game. I can focus on the more important parts of the game. Our story begins with Phil, who prior to getting abducted by mind flayers, was on his way back from the fictional country of Turkey. There, he got himself the most based Iraqi fade you could ever dream of. Now Phil gets infected with a parasite, which, if he fails to cure himself in time, will turn him into a mind flayer. We fight our way through the squid ship, and after some goofs and gaffs, and a intimate moment, Crash lands somewhere in favor. <laughs> Phil wakes up and continues his journey. He attempts daylight corpse robbery and wakes up Shadowheart, made of clean by the way. And I cover her head with a hat as I don't want to see that bowl haircut the rest of the game. We meet Asterion down the road who asks us to help him against a wild deviant art user and recruit him too. Now we must find a way to the nearest place of civilization. On the way, we do an epic prank on a bald person. Do our best to save the mage. Perhaps I should have clarified. Hmm? Helping and... Anyone? No! Can't make it out by myself! I'll perish in here! I'll perish. He was a lost cause, obviously. Fight some thieves honorably. Find the green toad. Zoru was right. Yellow as a toad, twice as ugly. And rescue her. She will come in hand in the future, but till then, we keep her locked up in our cook chair in the camp. We see a refugee camp being attacked and can finally test out how good the early game Eldritch Blast spam really is. Off to a good start. It is clear that we won't do much damage unless we get some levels in all of our characters, as Agonizing Blast and Repelling Blast is the key for our finger blasting ways. <laughs> After the fight, we head into the refugee camp, where... There are children here, you fool! Phil stops the fight between these two goobers and head deeper in. We recruit Will. Give me a best shot. Uh -huh. yeah. Not bad. Greet the local cow. Ooh. Steal from an orphan. Take this ring. It's lucky. Hey, hold on, you gotta pay for that. And go deeper. We soon find out that the tieflings and the druids don't really like each other. The druids want the tieflings out, and the tieflings can't go out because of the goblins. The druids' temporary leader Kaga is enacting the Rite of Thorns, which will lock out all non-druids of the camp, and the tieflings can't stop them, because obviously. We meet my favorite character in the game, and the one character that prevents me from ever playing Dark Urge. Talented musician, and the NPC I'm gonna gaslight my future wife to cosplay to. Alfira. Just listen. Sorry. 
Sorry. On our way to a healer, we consider stealing an idol, but don't. The healer yaps on about something, but finally directs us to Halsin, who is told to be held captive in the goblin camp. Before starting saving Private Halsin, we get Withers and respec everyone into a fully functioning firing squad. And of course, we pick Misty Step because I don't want to look into the eyes of my opponent when I Eldritch Blast them. When we finally reach the outskirts of the Goblin camp, we make sure to harass the homeless. and barge in on the making of a healthy British child. What the hell are you doing? Who for some reason always party wiped me. Anyways, we use our authority to enter the main goblin camp and look around for Halsen. The unwashed horde of goblins are everywhere, and when we finally find Halsin, he is locked inside the cage as a bear. Which is weird since he is a druid. Can't he just turn into a mouse and escape? Maybe he's a bear only druid? I don't know. So, anyways, I start blasting and absolutely mug a goblin child first hit. The other goblin child decides to make a run for it and stops right next to the famous Blade of the Frontiers. Halsin, seeing Will's heroic display, decides to break free and help out. And after several Eldritch Blast Bams, we finally defeat everyone. Halsen says he wants to help us to cure the parasite, but cannot come with us unless we eliminate the three goblin leaders. If rare is the beast that survives decapitation. Help me eliminate the drow Minthara, the hobgoblin draw Ragslin, and that perversion of a priestess, Gut. They are the ones holding these parasites together. The stage is set. You have your targets 47. Use any means necessary to eliminate them. First, Minthara. Which was the easiest one, since we just make it look like a workplace hazard. We simply point on the map where the refugee camp with the tieflings is located, and Mithara thanks me, and I thank her for walking over a bridge. Dead. Seems these true souls have their limits. A goblin notices, but a small price of 120 gold makes him forgive us for killing one of the three main generals. Boss Draxlin next, which we also try to make it seem as a workplace hazard. However, the falling ball of burning coal doesn't do much. But I realize, wait a second, I have repelling blast. I can simply knock off anyone who comes up to the ceiling with us. So Phil and his entourage, like many times before, start blasting, and anyone who even dares to come up simply get thrown off. Truly the ultimate stratagem that only Phil could come up with. Hey, hey, you can't do that. Unfortunately, Ragslin does push off both Shadowheart and Phil. Oh, I'm so dumb. Nice wolf, good one. Asterion does crit a Ragsin eventually, but he doesn't push him off. But Will has one another chance left. Oh, finally. Eventually, with enough knockdowns, Ragsin does get defeated, and his remaining minions are no issue at all, since their chances to hit us while we have the high ground is quite low. So we easily dispatch them. and the Ragsden and his goons gone, we can finally loot his treasury. 
and look at all that gold, chests brimming and overflowing. Surely this is in the thousands. Now the final target remains, true soul guts. By abusing this selunite architectural design, we can continue to fire a barrage of eldritch blasts from the high ground. And with natural choke points, the goblins can't do much. And the ones who have the audacity to play at our own playing field simply get knocked down multiple times. All three targets are down, the air fills with smell of fresh goblin corpses. And we return to Halzin to give the good news. Halzin thanks us and asks us to meet him at the refugee camp because celebrations are in order. He turns into a rat and leaves. Hey, wait a second. When we return to the grove, we see Halzin ripping Kaga apart for enacting the Rite of Thorns, just laying it onto her. I ought to exile you from this place forever. A misjudgment, one that should weigh heavily upon her. But the grove still needs her passion. Zevlor and the other tieflings want to join our camp to celebrate. We're ready to head Since Phil depopulated the entire goblin camp, the roads are finally safe and the tieflings can make their way to Baldur's Gate. After the party, Finn roleplays as me and goes to sleep alone. In the morning, Halzin tells us the only way to cure our parasite is to travel to a place called Moonrise Towers in the Shadowlands. But first, we need to get to the Underdark. It's extreme. I suppose it was too much to hope we were going to be cured here and now. We decide to tie up loose ends and get some free XP in the meanwhile, when we suddenly meet Raphael, a conniving devil who wants us to make a deal with him, and a deal with the devil always comes at a cost. Phil refuses, knowing that the devil takes what's most precious to you sometimes. And Phil can't go back to Turkey twice. We make our way across a bridge and see a bunch of bloated hyenas. Here is where we use the repelling blast to full effect. As the target gets knocked down, we still have time to cast more spells before the game turns into turn-based. Which gives us time to make a couple of free Eldritch Blasts. The hyena calls for backup and a gang of furries arrive. Here the most sensible thing to do is execution by firing squad. We investigate the area to see what happened and find out there was a battle near the local inn. In the entrance there is fire everywhere and a soldier asks Phil for help. Trapped in the building was Councillor Floric. Level 6, by the way, but for some reason he's stuck behind a couple of wooden planks. Anyways, she rewards us with a cool staff that makes our Eldritch Blast deal some electrical damage, which is always nice. We meet a couple of injured paladins in another destroyed building. They seem scared and easy pickings.
After a totally easy fight where everyone was not down to 1 HP, we recruit Karlak. I don't know why, since the cockchair is already occupied by Lazel. But we have her around just in case Phil needs to get carried back to bed. We find a couple of traders getting attacked by furries and help them. All the way behind there. Fortunately, they don't survive, but their chest is still intact and seems quite valuable. Unfortunately, lockpicking it was quite difficult. Come on, one more try. One more try. Okay, one more try. One more try. That's a curious looking chest. I wonder what's inside. Oh yeah, Shadow Art, I wonder too. We pocket the chest and Phil promises to stop his gambling addiction. Come on, one more try. Phil and his gang move on and see an old woman harassing two men. Phil joins in to save these two men. And the old lady disappears. And the two men suddenly collapse after smelling Phil's Dragon Ball Z perfume. The gang chases after the old woman and find out that this beautiful forest they are in is not what it seems. It is in fact a typical garden in Wales. The gang gets surrounded by the Welshmen. And after a tough fight, rest before their future battle that is against an old grandma. In the morning, Phil takes another try at the chest. Come on, one more try! Outside the old grandma's house, we meet a monster hunter who is seeking a pale, racist vampire. You're a monster hunter. I'm surprised. I thought all girl were vagrant cutthroats. Your friend has just heard the rumors of my people, that we steal chickens, curse your crops, seduce your daughters. I wish I had half the power settled folk think. We indulge in the hunter's conversation and make fun of Asterion a little while. Hunting for a vampire spawn. His name is Astarian, but I fear he's gone to ground. I hope the hag of these lands can help me flush him out, if I can afford her blood price. I don't know. I'm sure a vampire spawn could still rip out your throat if he felt like it. Wait, that's it. We're just walking away. The staring is right in front of us, man. Fine. But if this comes back to bite us, it's on your head. After finessing the hunter, we head inside the house where we saw the old lady earlier who is not actually a lady, but a hag. Oh! Ew! What the fuck? She runs off and the gang continues their home invasion. She gives us a final warning. This is my personal playhouse, and you don't have an invite. Get out! Phil replies. The hag continues to toy with us and disappears yet again. While Phil and the gang continue, we find the door where the hag went through, which seems to be a living person. The door shows us a vision of what happened the last time someone confronted the hag. Not again. Is there a cleric marching through the door, shrouded in the glow of the divine? The previous tree who confronted the hag didn't have a race of the eldritch blast, so I think we have a good chance. We fight against a group of brainwashed minions the hag created, 
and take a quick rest outside the cave to regain our strength. During the night, Phil gets woken up to the sound of two women fighting over him. We cannot lose Lazel yet, as we need her for the future ahead. So Phil tells Shadowheart to back down and firmly put Lazel back in the cot chair. We continue our hunt for the hag and find Mayrina, a captive in the cage. We slowly make our way for the remote control when we get suddenly ambushed by the hag. She sets the cage on fire and spawns duplicates of her. These duplicates are quite dangerous as they have the same abilities as the hag. However, they die in one hit. So we just need to damage her once with an Eldritch Blast and those distractions are gone. Right? Oh, nice, good one. There were a lot of misses, unfortunately. We sent Will to even stick a ghost with his needle. The hag fortunately teleports Marina out of the cage, but turns herself into her too. We have to make the right choice. But Phil, clever as ever, knows Marina is the one who is pregnant, as he knew the first time he saw her in the hut. So, just shoot the one who is pregnant, right? But for some reason, I decided to shoot the real pregnant Marina. I don't really know why I did it. It was 4 a.m. when I was recording this fight. And after 4 a.m., I am a different person. Marina does survive with one HP, fortunately. We get some even more misses. We only have 50% chance to hit her every time. And if you know me, dice rolls are never kind to me. Come on, one more try. One more try. Luckily, we are able to frighten her with one of our critical strikes, which procs our great old one passive. Phil makes a tactical retreat, as he is quite low. And the gang continues to miss a couple more times, when she suddenly spawns more duplicates, and it is not looking good. Phil goes down. We don't have time to hit the hag's duplicates at this point, so we fully commit for the real hag. The hag hits Asterion, but he stands there as he forgot to read the script and suddenly remembers and goes down. Two down, Will is low and Shadowheart is in a poison mist. It is now or never, Shadowheart has to hit or she will kill us the next turn. Okay. But suddenly the hag wants to parlay, a strike of good luck as she thinks she doesn't have a chance left, but in reality she could wipe the party the next turn. She pleads with the second in command of Phil's gang and tries to strike a deal. She wants to give us power in turn for letting her have Marina and the unborn child. It is all up to Will now to make the right choice and Phil is hoping Will does not screw this up. Will decides to threaten her and have both the power and letting Marina go. Phil is in the background, screaming as this may be a wipe. But Will passes the infamous 20 roll dice that Phil has failed so many times. The hag gets pissed off and gives us some of her hair which boosts one of our ability score which we put on Charisma, as it makes our Eldritch Blast stronger. Let's try this way. The day is saved, the gang helps Phil back on his feet and talk to Marina, who curses us out. As the hag's deal with Marina was to give her husband back in turn for her unborn baby. After the annoying conversation with Marina, we loot the hag's cave for some good potions that might come in handy in the future. However, we also find a staff that the hag was probably going to use to resurrect Marina's husband with. So, Phil goes back to Marina to tell her the good news. But then we remember her previous conversation with us. Feel a surge of power 
from the wand. Bring it back. Bring Connor back. Please. What have you done? You bastard! I thought you were going to hell! I thought... Ah, yes. The day is saved. The gang survives yet another encounter. And we make our way to the goblin camp to the entrance of the Underdark. On the way, I realized there is a slight problem. The entrance to the Underdark is inside the goblin camp, and we forgot about the goblins guarding the entrance. However, we do see an opportunity though, as the bridge is a perfect setup for a little firing squad that can prevent any goblins from ever reaching us with this little choke point. We line up and take the first shot. And this fight was easiest as the goblins could never even come near. After the battle, we head inside and make our way to the room where the Underdark's entrance lies. On the way, we backshot a couple more times a large troll before finding a puzzle room. But why do the puzzle if you can just pull a lever and skip it? We finally reach the Underdark the next chapter for our adventure to finding a cure. If you enjoy these types of videos, then please subscribe and leave a comment. If this is something that really fancies you, stay tuned for Act 2, as I will probably be making more of these videos. And if you have any suggestions in the future, then comment down below and tell me what you would like to see 